All right, rational exponents um, come from roots. So if you have an m root, then its exponent would be 1 over m. So another way of writing the cube root of 5 would be 5 to the power of 1 third. And this one would be x to the power of 1 fourth. So whatever that root is, you just place it in the denominator. And then working in reverse, if you have an exponent that is a fraction, you can put it back as a radical. So this one would be 7 to the fifth root. Just make sure you tuck it inside that little V right there. I think of it as the little root holder. All right, And I threw this one in just because. If there's no root given, then we know it's a square root. So this would be y to the 1 half. And that's it. All right, what if you have both an exponent and a root? Well, then you get a numerator and a denominator. That's all this is. This right here is your numerator, and this is your denominator for a root. And you can write it in a lot of different forms. So our first one would be the cube root of 8, and you can put the power of 4 inside or outside. That's all you have to do. So this one would be the square root of 9, the power outside, or square root of 9, power inside. All right, now if you throw a negative in front, that negative cannot be included. So if we put cube root of 125, the negative is not included. So it needs to be written in that form. All right, and then going in reverse, this would be 2, and again, this is our our numerator, this is our denominator, so that would be 5 thirds. And this would be x to the 3 fourths, and this would be y to the 5 halves. Remember, square root's not going to be given. All right, I wanted to also cover some different ways that these could show up, just to get a little bit of the confusion out. So if there's a parenthesis, then when you write it, just make sure you include the parentheses because the the a b is both going are both going to get the root and they're both going to get the power of the seven. If you decide to put the root on the outside, that's fine. Parentheses around the entire thing. And if it looks like this, this is really a times b to the seven thirds, which means the only one that's getting the root and the power is the b, and so it would look like that. And if you have a negative then this is just now adding another one. Remember, this is our ticket. So if we draw a border, we know that this little group right here is going down. So when we write it, it would be 5 on top, A on the bottom, and then you give it its root and its power, its exponent. And that's it. And going in reverse, very similar. So this would be negative 5, x to the 4 sevenths. See, it's only given to the x, no parentheses. And the only time it does is when it has a parenthesis around it. So we have three factors, 3, n, and m. And they're both getting a, po a power of 3 halves. All, not both, all three of them are. So you have to make sure you parenthesis the whole thing. If you write just this, it's only belonging to the m. That would be completely incorrect. And then the same situation here. This is 3, and this would be a, n the whole thing, negative one seventh. I know we're supposed to write a negative exponent, but I just wanted you to show, I just wanted to show you that you could. So the an would come up, which gives it a negative exponent, and they both have to have a power of seven. So they're both on the bottom, they both get a negative. They both get a root of seven, so they both have a seventh. All right, and that's how we rewrite exponents with rationals or radicals into rationals. So now we can apply it. So if we wrote this one, it's the cube root of 125 squared. And I don't want to square 125. So let's rewrite it the way, another way. So cube root of 125, and then we'll square it. It's always easier to do the root first, and then do the exponent. The num so basically denominator first, uh, numerator second. So number one, number two. That's how you want to do this. So the cube root of 125 is 5. And then if we square that, we get 25. And that's all you have to do. 
If there's a negative, make sure you don't include it. So cube root of 125 squared. So that's negative, and then the quantity 5 squared, and that's negative 25. Remember, this is a leading negative. This means negative this, so the whole answer will still stay negative. All right, what if we throw a negative exponent? This is just now another thing to do. So let's look at it in parts. This is number one. We've got to square root it. Then number two, we're going to cube it. And then number three, we're going to flip it. So if we square root the four, we get two. And then we're going to cube it, which gives us eight. And then we're going to flip it, one eight. That's it. So it's step one. Let me do this in a different color. Step one, step two, step three. You just work your way around. So step one, step two, step three. All right, what if there's a negative in front? Then the answer is just negative. So we already know it's negative. So let's take our four, square root it, it's two. Cube it, it's eight. Flip it, negative one eight. That's it. So same thing over here. You notice we're cube rooting it, it's five. 5 squared is 25. You can start doing these in your head. If you pick a number, 16, and I'll do 3 fourths. So we do 4th root of 16, which is 2, and then cube it, and that's 8. And that's it. Thank you.